up a tab, grab a seat, and pour a pint. It's time for the Beer Guys Radio Show. You want free beer? Go to the brewery. Dedicated to the art, science, and enjoyment of craft beer. Yeah, what's wrong with the beer we got? Now, here are your hosts, Tim Dennis and Brian Hewitt. And welcome to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We are radio for the local craft beer movement. We're broadcasting from the Beer Guys Radio Studios at Ironmonger Brewing in Marietta, Georgia. I'm Tim Dennis. And I'm Brian Hewitt. This week, we're talking with Clayton Mathis, the head brewer of Apalachicola, Florida's Oyster City Brewing. Clayton, thanks for joining us. Thank you guys for having us. Yeah, we're looking forward. We just got into your Hooter Brown healer here. Hooter Brown here. Hooter Brown here. Brian. And uh, we'll talk about all Hooter Brown a little more in depth here in the near future. But uh, Clayton, you guys actually uh, had some storms down there, but just just slid to the westie. Is that right? Yeah, you know, we get one or two uh, every summer. It was about the same time of the year last year when um, we had another one roll through and we were lucky enough to miss it again. So, yeah, it went west of us and all we got was about two days worth of rain. Okay, that's not bad. You're kind of tucked in there a little bit, right? Is it like geographically speaking, is it kind of better for you when the the storms come through? They typically miss you just because of the layout? Well, we've been pretty lucky lately, but when you look at the map, actually, that little trigger that sticks out right there on Florida, we are actually right on that point. Um, So (laughs) So we're we're actually just hanging there waiting (laughs) on it. (laughs) We're just hanging out there waiting on it, and we've had our share of them. But, yeah, we've been pretty lucky uh, over the last several years. So how's the weather now? Because normally I know when we have tropical storms move through here, we're a little further inland, but normally the couple days afterwards are just gorgeous. It's still a little dim. Um, and it's just very humid. So um, it rained about half of the day today. And so maybe tomorrow will be one of those beautiful days that we okay. have after the storm. But right now, man, it's just humid. You know, I was in the brewery all day sweating. Good but. stuff. So, Brian, what did you get into this week? Boy, uh, a, a lot of things, a fair number of beers. Um, I went and checked out the uh, Lost Druid Groundbreaking, which was right. which was cool. I, I saw Basically dirt and where they're going to start everything from from scratch. They had the uh, the golden shovels. They were digging the dirt and making speeches and things like that. That was very cool. And that's a new brewery coming to Avondale, Avondale States, Georgia, yeah. right? Avondale okay. States, Georgia. Yeah. And while I was in the area, I went over just down the way a bit to three taverns and hung out there for a bit. And I won't lie. I may have had a few or more than a few midnight snacks. I mean, more than a few. More probably. than a few. Yeah. I, uh, What's ABV on that one? Oh yeah, it have, it's but it's a snack because it's lower than some of the others in this series, right? I think it's in the. Uh, I'd have to look this. I think it's like eight, six to eight. Oh, maybe. okay. I, I mean, right. maybe maybe it's not that high. That I'm, doesn't sound like much of a snack. I well, it was a good snack for me. Okay. I enjoyed that Fair a great enough. deal. Yeah, and you know what? They had a few other things on at Three Taverns. I really enjoyed. They had their Rapturous Luxure, which was Rapturous with lactose, vanilla, and extra raspberry. That was really good. Nice. That was very, very good. I was uh, I almost liked that more than Midnight Snack, but uh, not quite. And uh, had the Lord Fog while I was there, too. That's okay. the uh, the Bergamot, the Earl Grey uh, sour that they've added lavender and vanilla and lactose to. So I, that's... You know, I know that's a really popular beer, but I don't I don't care for it. The tea in there doesn't doesn't quite do it for me. Not that it's not well made beer. I just don't care for the flavors that come together there. Now, it's interesting you say that because I had it at a beer fest. And when I at the beer fest on a very pulverized palate, I got almost only tea. This time around, it seemed a lot more balanced to me, and I enjoyed okay. it a great deal more. So I had to try it again. A fresher palate. What did on. you do? I think you did some. So I did some of the same things that you did. We we ran around last weekend. We had a few breweries. Sure. We, we went over to Pontoon. We went up to uh, Good Word in Duluth, Georgia, which is a fantastic brew pub up there. We we tried one of each, Brian. We'll call them snacks. So, yeah, little snacks. Yeah, we'll call them snacks. So they had one called Bon Mott, which is a sour ale. Yeah. That was phenomenal. And the Berliner, which Ophelia, is that right? Ophelia, yeah, Ophelia. Berliner, both of yeah. those were fantastic. And then I went out for some Korean barbecue and I tried a Korean beer. And I hadn't had Korean beer before. This was called CASS, I think, C-A-S-S. C-S-S. Yeah, and it okay. was your standard, you know, mass market pills that you see anywhere. But okay. it was pretty sweet. A little too sweet for me. I imagine probably a good amount of rice in it, I guess. Probably. That, that would so, be my guess. But that was it, man. That's what I got into this way. And I started getting into Oktoberfest beers, which I'm a fan of. And... You kind of know my rule, Brian. No Oktoberfest beers before September 1st. Sure. Can't play into the seasonal creep. So we got past the 1st of September. I started getting into them. And I'm not going to talk a lot about them this week because next week we're going to do an Oktoberfest and German beer show. 
and we're going to talk about some of the beers that are available for the season this year. Clayton, any uh, you get into any interesting beers or activities this week? Um, yeah, actually, I did. We had uh, some guys out of Tallahassee, a uh, proof brewing company out of there. They okay. dropped a double IPA called Warpath um, in cans, and I happened to get my hands on a couple of those. Fantastic beer uh, to start off their college football season up there. Um, and then I had another little brewery in Tallahassee called Ology. They have a uh, New England IPA called Sensory Overload, and they did a double dry hop series of it, put it in some cans, and uh, I actually got some delivered down here. Um, it was dry hop, double dry hop with Galaxy. And, and you said that brewery is called Ology? That is called Ology. Okay. They do okay. some pretty fantastic sours and some uh, good uh, IPAs as well. Uh, they've nice. only been around about a year, much smaller than Proof. Um, but yeah, that's what I got into this weekend, along with several other alcoholic beverages um, that Oyster City produces and watching that's college football. Sounds like a pretty good week then. Yeah, yes, it was it fantastic. You know, Tim, I think it is time for Truck and Taps Beers of the Week. Crack open a cold one. It's the Truck and Tap Beer of the Week. Woo-hoo! Craft beer and food trucks in downtown Woodstock. Truckandtap.com. Well, Brian, as always, we have a great selection of beers to sip on this week. So we've got some special guests in the studio with us, and they're just hanging out. They're listening. We have the guys from High Card Brewing who are currently constructing their brewery in Tucker, Georgia. And they brought a few beers for us to sample, so we're going to get into those and check it out. We also have plenty of Oyster City Brewing Company beers. We are currently sipping on Hooter Brown. We also have Appalach IPA, Mangrove Pale Ale, Mill Pond Dirty Blonde, and Red Snapper IPA. You know, we're all set, totally set. So, Brian, what is happening in the news? What's in the news? The beer guys have the scoop. Extra, extra, read all about it. Time for headlines. All right, so Tim, as as I like to say a lot, big beer just can't catch a break. Poor big beer. Poor, poor big poor beer. Poor big beer. Yes. Miller Coors will be eliminating 350 of their salary jobs by the end of October. This restructuring move has come on the news of a 2.2% decline in net sales during their second quarter earnings call as well as a decision to pull the plug on their underperforming, quote, two hats, unquote, line of light beers targeting 20-somethings. So some of these cuts are expected to come from a voluntary severance program, and uh, 150 unfilled positions in the company will also be eliminated. So we're looking at probably 200 people either getting fired or laid off. But they still plan to hire a new chief marketing officer, and they're planning to launch a new low-calorie alcoholic beverage line called Cape Line next spring. Because I'm a nice guy, Tim, I'll help Miller Coors out. If they put the key back in Keystone, I will go buy a case of hams right away because I'm a nice guy. It's a win-win. So I think they should do that. Now, I, I appreciate your offer and I understand your kindness and your gentle and giving heart. Yes. So that's, that's what it's about. But I think you've bought hams before, haven't you? One other time. Uh-huh, ironically. So. So this is, but you know what? It's, it's fair enough. You make the problem. So a whole case of hams, if they put the key back in, I will personally buy another case of hams. You're on the line. Miller. I I will. It's it's, what say you Miller Coors. I'm here waiting. The ball is in your court. That's right. More than 50 breweries will be capping their bottles with the pints for prostates cap this fall. Pints for Prostates is a 501c3 nonprofit charity that encourages men to seek regular health screenings. This fall, they're reminding guys to get screened by way of 4.8 million bottle caps. The top of the cap will feature the Pints for Prostate logo. The underside will feature messages intended to encourage men to go talk to their doctors. As I said before, at least 50 breweries are involved, including big names like Deschutes, Founders, Bells, and Alesmith. But a few other breweries that we've talked to on Beer Guys Radio, like D9 and Hardywood Park, are also going to be involved. The, pro- the program is still available to any interested craft breweries out there that would like to participate. You just go to pintsforprostates.org and you can talk to them. And home brewers can also get involved by buying bottle cats caps from Northern Brewers. So you don't have to be a pro brewer to participate. You know, that, that is a little tricky to say. It is difficult it? You to don't say, have to be yeah. a pro brewer to participate. That's right. Okay. I painted myself into a corner. No, but it's one. a really good cause. You yeah, know, raising awareness. Cool. It's always good to raise awareness of these things. Absolutely. If you're listening to the Beer Guys radio show, we need to take a break, but we'll be back very soon to talk more with Clayton of Oyster City Brewing Company.
Craft beer forged with a reverence for tradition and new styles that start a revolution. Ironmonger Brewing. The brewers at Ironmonger Brewing pride themselves at being masters of barrel-aged, hoppy, and sour beers. They invite you to their tap room in Marietta, Georgia to taste and see. Also visit their barrel room for an intimate drinking experience with great live entertainment. Keep up to date on all things Ironmonger by liking them on Facebook. Ironmonger Brewing, establishing a new standard in craft beer. Looking for a great way to promote your business? Cedar Stream has what you need. For apparel, stickers, signs, and banners, we're your one-stop shop. There are never any art fees or setup fees. And if you need your items quickly, there's no additional charge for rush orders. Whether you own a brewery, bar, bottle shop, or other business, Cedar Stream is ready to serve you. Visit cedarstream.com for more info or call 800-686-7488 for immediate assistance. Cedar Stream. We print America. the beer guys on facebook twitter and instagram to be the man you gotta beat the man Woo! now back to the beer guys radio show welcome back to the beer guys radio show for more great craft beer info visit us on the web at beerguysradio.com we're broadcasting from the beer guys radio studios at ironmonger brewing and we're talking with clayton mathis of oyster city brewing company clayton thanks once again for joining us we do appreciate it i'm happy to be here thank you guys for having me Absolutely. So we, as we mentioned in the first segment, we're getting into your Hooter Brown. And uh, this is a Tupelo, Hooter Brown Tupelo Honey Owl. Can you tell us a bit about this beer? Uh, Yes, that is one of our original two beers that we started with a little over four and a half years ago. It's a pretty, it's eight and a half percent, pretty robust ale um, made with local Tupelo honey and gallberry honey. That is, uh, it's harvested right up uh, the Apalachicola River um, at Owl Creek, the Tupelo is. And um, then we have some gallberry honey harvested up river and a little bit further over about uh, two hours over into Panama City along the Gulf Coast as well. It's a, it's pretty easy drinking beer for it to be eight and a half percent and sure for is. it to be that uh, dark Uh Rich honey, uh, got some chocolate wheat malt flavoring in there, and some honey malt goes into it. Um, it is our most popular beer by a long shot. It makes up about 41% of the beer we brew all year long. That's, that's a good percentage for a cent. But, you know, I think that's – there's usually breweries that have one that's just kind of their – their cornerstone, beer, sure, their but flagship. When, but when you think about, it, they're usually not on the coast, and it's not usually not a brown ale, right? A honey brown ale on coastal Florida. That's that right. is an unusual flagship yeah, for for the area there. So yeah, um, and our but, main market is out west, which is um, all along the Gulf Coast and along the beach and into Tallahassee. And you know, you'd think you'd see kind of a drop off during the summer for a brown ale, but we don't at all. That's it keeps it's, on it's, going, it huh? Out. Yeah. Okay. So while we were talking about the uh, the Hooter Brown, I got to ask: uh, every every honey is different. What what's what is Tupelo honey? What does that taste like? What is that what is that giving to the beer? What's the deal with that? Today? A lot of people um, think that Tupelo honey is from Tupelo, Mississippi, but that's not true. It's from the Tupelo tree. So um, we have several Tupelo trees up along the Apalachicola River and all along the Gulf Coast. Um, what that Tupelo honey does, it will never crystallize. This honey will never crystallize. It is a much bolder flavored honey, not quite as sweet, but very, it's very rich, but not as sweet as any of the honeys. Um, we used to use all Tupelo honey, but our production has gone up a lot and we've had to cut, um, cut in some gallberry honey, which Gallberry honey is actually about 13 to 17% Tupelo anyway. But if you try those two honeys side by side, the gallberry is very sweet. The Tupelo is just very rich. And they're almost like, say, a good coffee, like two different countries' coffee, like, say, an Ecuadorian coffee or a Cuban coffee. Very different. I don't really know how to explain it other than that. That makes sense. I get that. We're coffee nerds. Brian sure. more so than I am, but they both taste like coffee, 
but yes. there's just a, a different big difference variations. There, so. there is a huge amount of variation from country and, to country. And I will admit, until very recently, I thought Tupelo honey meant that it was from Tupelo, Mississippi. Because that's <laughs> the only Tupelo that I. Hey, we all I learn knew. something every day. So, yeah, I got to keep keep on learning. Absolutely. Well, good stuff. Well, uh, Clayton, what is your uh, craft beer story? What got you interested in craft beer and led you to brewing? Well, um, I moved, I went to college in Coastal Carolina University in Myrtle Beach, um, the Chanticleers, and I moved up to Raleigh, North Carolina um, about 10 years ago, and I got, that was the first place I really got, and they had two breweries at the time, Raleigh Brewing Company, and I can't remember the other one, but I really got immersed in the craft beer scene. And I was pretty close to Asheville as well and spent a good bit of time in that area. And, of course, we all know what Asheville has to offer. Sure. That place will inspire you. Yeah, sure. that'll get you into it. Yes, it will. And I lived in Raleigh for about three and a half years. And then I moved to Apalachicola for a woman. You know, the reason why we did most things. What a great reason, (laughs) right? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And uh, I came down here. And I met these guys who were opening up a brewery about a year after I'd been here and got to talking with them and got to work with them and brew some for free and learn from them. And then about eight months after they had been opened, I realized that that's what I wanted to do. And I came to them and spoke with them. And I had very little craft beer, um, not, uh, not really knowledge. I've drank a lot of craft beer, but I didn't have that much craft beer experience as far as being inside of a brewery. So they took a chance on me and it's been very successful for us over the last three and a half years. Well, speaking of the brewery, how, what can you tell us about how the brewery itself got started? One of the, uh, we got four owners. We got Rex, we got Cassie, Susan, and Bo. Well, Rex and his wife, Shelly started brewing beer in their backyard after a lot of people came into the restaurant they own, the Al Cafe Tap Room, and said, what's your local beer? Well, there wasn't one. The closest brewery was about two and a half hours away, which would be in Grayton Beach, Grayton Brewery. And um, they said, you know what? That's what this place needs. So they started brewing beer in their backyard and bought a building across the street from the Al Cafe. And they hired a gentleman named Jamie Ray out of Birmingham, Alabama, consultant to come in and help them start their brewery. It was about a year long process of construction and brewing tons and tons of five and 10 gallon batches of beer in their backyard, going to Beer Fest, getting the name out there and finally opened up and brewed its first batch of beer, which was a Mill Pond Dirty Blonde, on the eight and a half barrel system we currently have on June 1st of 2014. So what is the beer scene like? I know you didn't have the breweries at the time, but what's the beer scene like right now in Apalachicola? The beer scene now is we have, um, our brewery is consistently crowded, Um, We have lots of people coming down from Tallahassee, coming down from Atlanta. We've really um, grown our tourism industry in Apalachicola over the last, I'd say, three to five years. It has really, really blown up. Um, I guess folks are kind of looking for something a little different, Um, getting out into nature and getting to these smaller little towns like ourselves. Um, We have a lot of other breweries coming down to visit, bringing beer. We have the tap room across the street that has all of our beers on tap, plus usually between six and 10 um, Florida beers, um, Georgia beers, and some of the, you know, some of the great Bells and Founders beers. And um, all of our local bars in town across the way in St. George Island, East Point, they're all been very supportive of our brand. And we have a lot of our local community to thank for our. For our successes. Now, how big exactly is Apalachicola? The city of Apalachicola is about 2,700 people. Oh, okay. Wow. So it's a really small <laughs> little community there, huh? All yes, right. it is. Um, the actual whole county, which encompasses Apalachicola, Carabelle, and East Point, and St. George Island, is about 8,000 residents. Okay. 
So there's probably more more oysters than people in Appalachia. Cold, definitely, Florida. right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, they definitely yes. used to be. Right now, hey. there's not as many, but yeah, there's a lot more oysters, a lot more sand, a lot more everything than people in Appalachia. Cold. That kind of reminds me. I had a, a friend recommend to me to go to a place called Cedar Key, Florida, oh, yeah. for a weekend trip. They said if you want to go somewhere that's nice, relaxing, but it's not touristy, go to Cedar Key. So I ended up down there. Are you are you familiar with Cedar Key, Clayton? I am familiar with Cedar Key, and we are often compared to Cedar Key. Uh, okay, um, that's just yeah. judging by what very you said. Similar. I could very, see very that. similar. All right. Well, good stuff, Clayton. We appreciate uh, the info there. Apalachicola, Florida, Brian. Little bitty town with a brewery. Sounds great. Yeah, we need to take a quick break, but we'll be back very soon to talk about fish dip with Clayton from Oyster City Brew. It's Brian and Tim, the beer guys. If you're like us, no lunch or dinner is complete without a pint or two of craft beer. Which is why Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock and Alpharetta are always on our list. Tim, why do they call it Truck and Tap? Well, the tap part is easy, Brian. They've got 18 of them. As for the truck part, that's where it gets interesting. Truck and Tap features your favorite Atlanta area food trucks daily, so that way you're getting a different menu every day. Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock, Alpharetta, and coming soon to Duluth in 2018. Truckandtap.com. Let them know that the beer guys sent you. We are Reformation Brewery, celebrating the reformer in you. Locally crafted within the renowned Etowa watershed of Woodstock, Georgia, Reformation creates yeast-forward brews full of aroma and flavor crafted to last. Come see us in beautiful Woodstock, Georgia, for a tour and tasting of unique brews that you can't find anywhere else. Reformation Brewery, set beer free. ReformationBrewery.com the beer guys on facebook twitter and instagram your revolution is over mr lebowski condolences the bums lost now back to the beer guys radio show welcome back to beer guys radio show i want to give a quick shout out to one of our great radio affiliates real talk 93.3 fm in tallahassee florida catch beer guys radio on 93.3 every saturday at 5 p.m eastern we're broadcasting from the beer guys radio studios at ironmonger brewing and we're talking to clayton mathis Ed Brewer at Oyster City Brewing Company. Very good. And Brian, that is the station closest to Oyster City Brewing Company that carries Beer Guys Radio. That is correct. Awesome. Good stuff. So, Clayton, question for you before we get into the fish dip talk, which Brian is just itching to ask. We'll get there. But uh, I noticed that your job title officially says head brewvangelist. So what does a brewvangelist do? What does that entail? Well, you're all familiar with an evangelist. But what I do is that I believe I'm here to make beer and to spread the word about great beer wherever I can go. Hence, being on your radio station today. There we go. That's it. So we share a common cause. We always say we're spreading the good word of craft beer. That's right. So that's it. Getting out there, let people know about it, know that breweries exist, let... uh, let everybody get connected up and have a good time. It's a religious experience. It really, I, I mean, I feel touched by yes, this. Absolutely, yes, absolutely. Really you know, uh, you know, Clayton, Brian took the job title of director of intoxicology. Yes. For our homebrew operation. And, Indeed. Uh, sounds great. It yeah, sounds like a great can, job. Well, that's it. I, as far as I can tell, I think the job duties are just pretty much getting drunk all the time. Tim, a doctor must practice. That's practice. important. Always yes. practicing, right? It's part of my practice. Well, yes. you're very you're very good at your practice. Uh, I, uh, thank you. Yes, thank you. I've worked very hard at yeah. it. So let's let's get into it. What is a dip off? I've never heard of anything like that. That's an event, right? That's coming up for you guys. It is an event. We just did that event um, about let's see, three weeks ago. We it was our third one. We do it every year, uh, usually the first or second. Sunday in August, and we started it three years ago. We take, we got a buddy, his name's Captain Clint, big proponent of the brewery, actually used to work for me. He's a, he's a charter captain, goes out, catches a lot of fish. This year it was tuna, caught some blackfin tuna and some uh, amberjack and smokes it 
in two pound containers. You come pick it up. You make your fish dip. You bring it back on Sunday. I think we had 32 of them this year. We have a panel of judges and then we have a people's choice and we raise money to a select charity, which in previous years have been the Humane Society. This year, it was to go to some victims of a fire about six miles from here in the East Point. Um, about 36 guys lost their home over there a few months ago. Oh. So we raised uh, $2,500 with help from the Owl Cafe, and uh, we had a clear winner. And uh, it was a fantastic day for everybody. You know, that was one of the things I saw, Clayton, that uh, reminded me of Cedar Key, because that was a place I, I discovered they do smoke mullet dip. And when I was going down there, my friend said, make sure you get the smoked mullet dip. I'd never heard of such a thing. And, and I got to be honest, just the name alone does not sound appealing. You know, <laughs> No, it doesn't. Said, and we do have places smoke, that like smoked mullet here. See, so I went down there <laughs> and I got to talk to the locals and I, I told them that a friend told me to try it. And they said, there's a guy that sets out, he's got like a roadside stand and uh, that he sets out and has like an umbrella, a uh, patio table umbrella. They said, if the umbrella is up, He's got dip available. If the umbrella's down, he's out, and you're and it's gone for the day. And people will line up at that little stand, waiting for dude to pop his umbrella up to get the fish dip. So aside from fish dip, you guys are known for your oysters, right? So what kind of beer pairs well with oysters? What kind of attributes are we looking for? What kind of styles are we looking for when we're cooking up some oysters? Um. Well, I. Uh- yeah, you know, we get asked that a lot. So um, I've come up with my three favorite beers for oysters. And it's great that you asked that question. It's a great question. Um, I think that we have right now, we have on kind of a session style pale ale. It's called the Empire Micah Pale Ale. Um, it is a single hop uh, pale ale. And I think that it brings out the flavor of the oysters in a way that not many of your other beers will do. Like if you drink a uh, IPA, that's a little bit too heavy on the hops, it's going to kind of deaden them. But when you get that um, centennial hop running through there and at about a 5% ABV, you can drink it while you eat several dozen of the oysters instead of just having one of them. <laughs> several dozen. Several dozen. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then we have, we don't have this on tap right now, but it's uh it's a great summer beer. I just uh, took it off tap and put on a new wheat beer. But we have a lemon shark wheat beer. Um, it's kind of um, it's very lemony. We use lemon grass and lemon peel. It's got that uh, clove and banana that you would expect from uh, the uh, German wheat. And I think that the tartness is great with the brine. And it's also a pretty low alcohol beer with four point seven percent beer and i think that just really blends well with uh the tartness and the uh kind of the saltiness of the oysters that you get around here and the last one would be our barrel aged uh stout um it's not an oyster stout and a lot of people have asked why we haven't made an oyster stout and i won't get into that right now but <laughs> brian was going to ask that as well it's we actually yeah. wondered that yeah the question is coming Okay, I'm ready for it. Always ready for it. But uh, I think that it's kind of a low carbonation beer, and it lets the uh, the flavors of the oyster kind of come through. And um, it's very heavy on the malt, not very heavy on the hops, so it really lets the flavor come through and doesn't um, doesn't interfere with your palate. Enjoying that brininess and saltiness of a great local oyster. Now uh, we mentioned, you know, that we're starting to play around with Oktoberfest beers, or I am a little bit. Brian's had one that he didn't care for so far. That's true. Uh, but you have a celebration coming up, Appalachia Oktoberfest. Is that right? Yes, that is right. So tell us about that festival, what goes on at Appalachia Oktoberfest. We uh, work in conjunction with a bar down the road that serves a lot of our beer called the Bowery Station. They started on Friday. I will be playing a little guitar and singing some music, and I will tap our golden keg of our Oktoberfest Lionfish Mars and Lager. Then uh, there'll be music Friday and Saturday at the Bowery Station. Sunday, we will have all three of our lagers, which are uh, Tate's Hellas Lager, um, our Lionfish Oktoberfest Mars and Lager, 
and our yet-to-be-named Munich Dunkel Lager. We will have five bands all day, chugging competition, uh, stein holding competition, some German music, and maybe even a hammer throwing competition. You should do the stein holding and hammer throwing competition in conjunction. Why with no each axe other. throwing? I mean, that seems isn't that hot right now? Axe throwing? I or think it, just, it is. Yeah, but I guess that's not Oktoberfesty though. What is uh, what is a stein holding competition? Is that's how many like stacking them up? No, you hold. Uh, you fill one liter. We have liter mugs um, all day, and you uh, fill it with beer. And hold it directly out in front of you without bending your elbow. And whoever holds it the longest is the winner and gets, you know, some swag and a free beer. How can you drink it if you can't bend your elbow? I don't understand this at all. Yes, doesn't make oh, any no, sense. Oh, no, you just it? hold it. You hold it out. It is a traditional German Oktoberfest game. You hold it straight out in front of you. And whoever can hold it there the longest without dropping it or letting it fall and spill any beer is the winner. Now, we do have a separate chugging competition where you chug a okay. liter of beer and whoever gets it down the fastest is the winner you know that sounds like good training though brian holding out there strengthening your muscles for just for the chugging competition you do the holding competition to strengthen up and get ready for all the chugging, chugging i mean those you leaders. do reps though not not the long you do 10 seconds and hit that and then another one 10 seconds right it's reps. you're just it's totally opposed reps. to just holding a beer yeah i mean i don't know why it, i would right? just hold a beer and not drink it do you want I'd to take fail. part in the holding competition no i do not thank <laughs> you very much then you can just come down and be a part of it and you get a free beer for being in the competition so you know, you just hold it out there for a couple of seconds, then chug it. Okay, I'm go. sold. Yeah, I'm in. Yeah, yeah. Count him in. He's going to go for it. Good stuff. We all win. Everybody wins. You're listening to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We need to take a quick break, but we'll be back with more from Oyster City Brewing right after this. Are you thinking about opening a brewery in the Atlanta area? If so, take a look at the park at Georgetown. This unique community will feature a collection of restaurants as well as a craft brewery located within the new JW Homes Luxury Development, Dunwoody Green. Conveniently located less than half a mile from I-285, this enclave of restaurants will be the gathering place in Dunwoody. Trim and Associates, the developer of the park at Georgetown, wants to talk to you. For more information, call Stephen St. Paul at 404-256-2960, extension 5. That's 404-256-2960, extension 5. Craft beer forged with a reverence for tradition and new styles that start a revolution. Ironmonger Brewing. The brewers at Ironmonger Brewing pride themselves at being masters of barrel-aged, hoppy, and sour beers. They invite you to their tap room in Marietta, Georgia to taste and see. Also visit their barrel room for an intimate drinking experience with great live entertainment. Keep up to date on all things Ironmonger by liking them on Facebook. Ironmonger Brewing, establishing a new standard in craft beer. the beer guys on facebook twitter and instagram what now back to the beer guys radio show welcome back to the beer guys radio show make sure to follow us on the socials beer guys radio on facebook twitter and instagram we're broadcasting from the beer guys radio studios at ironmonger brewing and we're talking with clayton mathis of oyster city brewing company clayton we are sipping on some mangrove pell l right now and Brian and I, with our infinite wisdom, were trying to figure out why this was called Mangrove. And then it hit us. We figured it out. Yes. We figured out the <laughs> reference there. So this is a Mango Pell correct? That is correct. Yeah. Want to tell us a little more about this one? Yeah. Um, it actually came about by accident. Um, we were um, making um, our blonde beer, and we left out some crystal malt, which makes it our dirty blonde. And we decided, hey... We got some mango puree right back here. Let's toss it in. And we did. And we added more and more. And then we kind of tweaked it a little bit. And it's now become our third most popular beer. It's uh, become pretty popular because of its 8.2%. 8.2. Extreme. It's a session. It's a session. <laughs> it, it tastes like fruit and it'll get you there. And it'll yes. get you there, yes. And yes. to be honest, you know, the, down in Florida, the fruity beers are popular. You know, that's well, they're popular everywhere, but especially on the beach, that seems like it would be popular to go with. Oh, those sure. Kind of ingredients. Yeah, it's great when it's 100 degrees out right. on a summer yes. day. In addition to mango, you've got 
a few beers out there with some other really unique ingredients. So one of them with beets, and I think you've got another with kumquat and peppercorn. Do you have any other crazy concoctions in the works? Uh, we just put out a American wheat. It is an American wheat beer that I used uh, a little bit of rye malt, which I don't really use in any of our uh, beers that we currently have on draft, some blood orange, and a little bit of a crab spice out of uh, the eastern shore of Maryland called J.O. Uh, Crab okay. spice. You know, when Brian said any other crazy concoctions, I didn't expect you to nail it that much. <laughs> you nailed it. Yeah. My so, head is I forgot off about that one until I actually looked at my notes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now, is it to the point, have you tried the finished product yet? Yes, I just tapped it about a week ago. Okay. And luckily, you get all three of those come out into the flavor. I'm pretty satisfied with it. It, we had brewed a five gallon batch before um, for my girlfriend's birthday, who is from the area of Maryland that uses crab spice. And uh, this time I did a 230 gallon batch of it, and it turned out almost identical to it. So yeah, we're pretty happy with it. And it's on tap until we run out at the brewery only. You yep. know, we, we actually had a brewery up here that did a collaboration, two breweries, Burnt Hickory Brewery and Sweetwater for an anniversary party. And they did, I think it was. It was like an amber ale with small malt and Old Bay. Yeah. Uh, because they were oh. from they were from that area. And just mm-hmm. the description, it reminded them of a bar that they hung out in that had red carpet and smelled of ashtrays. <laughs> so that's why they were on the red <laughs> owl smoke malt and they ate crabs there. And I'm like, this beer just sounds horrible. <laughs> but we got a crowler of it and it actually was pretty darn tasty. You know, all the flavors came together well. The And, you know, when you hear Old Bay in a beer, I at least thought, well, this is just going to destroy anything else. But uh, it was restrained or just added a neat spiciness to everything. One thing that was interesting about that beer is that immediately when I kegged it, it wasn't, I was like, oh, man, this isn't what I want it to be. I let it sit in there for about three days, tried it again, and it had completely mellowed out to finish with that little bit of crab spice. So that was very unique. I'd never had that issue with any of our other beers before. So is crab spice the the most unique or the most unusual ingredient that you've put in a beer? Or are there other things in your dark seafood past with beer? Um, I have made a small batch of an oyster stout and used oyster shells, brine, and actual oysters in a beer. But I have not done one that I have served in the brewery because I haven't been happy with it and because of the state of the Apalachicola Bay with not as many oysters in it. Now we've got a lot of guys farming oysters, so maybe we will get to involve all three parts of the oyster into a beer within the next year. Okay, that'd be good. I like a good oyster stout. Yeah, the, the sure. brightness adds to it is is really nice there. And speaking of uh, darker beers, we actually forgot to mention something pretty cool about your Hooter Brown earlier when we were talking about Clay. We talked about Hooter, and we forgot Hooter's greatest accomplishment, Brian. Oh yes, yes. Yeah, so Hooter Brown actually won a medal. I think it was a silver medal. Is that right, uh, Clayton? That's correct. A silver medal at, at the U.S. Open of Beer. Very cool for the Imperial Brown L category. Yes, sir. So it's a award-winning, most popular beer. Good stuff. Was that the first time it won an award? Because I think I saw something about it possibly winning some other awards. We've won, um, you know, several People's Choice Awards at Beer Fest. We won a gold medal at Destin Beer Fest uh, back in 2014 and 15. Um, but to have it nationally recognized, this was our first um, medal for a, you know, a nationally recognized um program so we're pretty proud of it from little apalachicola florida Brian. absolutely yeah now we didn't see clayton any mention of sour beers when we did some searching out there so have you dipped your toe into the sour beer pool yet as far as drinking sour beer yes as far as making sour beer very very little we have done some experimenting with five and seven and ten gallon batches in our homes in our friends' homes, in some of the owners' homes. But um, we have not done any in our brewery because mainly um, we are running on 2,000 square feet and we will produce 3,500 barrels of beer this year. We have, our core beers have become so popular 
that we have not had time to delve into something like that, nor do we have the room to store them for the long periods of time that it takes to make a good sour beer. That makes sense. Now, uh, Berliners, yeah, I know there's a couple of ways you can do a quick kettle sour there, or some even use just a, a lactic acid. I know the Florida Weiss is popular. Sure. Some of that was good there. So ever thought about going that way, or do you want to go go all the way or not at all? Yeah, we've thought about going that way. I think that I've got a couple of other beers um, right now that I want to push forward with it. But I, we do have a lot of time to experiment during the next few months. So I have the three lagers going now. We'll be putting out a session IPA, a New England IPA, and we've talked about a Goza or a Berliner Weiss after that. So probably sometime in the first of the year just to round out our beer portfolio. You know, I, I was watching a video on the internet about your brewery, and I saw something about your tap wall. That's, uh, tell us about your tap wall. It, it sounds very interesting to me. There was a lot of pieces involved in it. Yeah, awesome, awesome, man. Our tap wall is constructed of the um, back of an old oyster boat. And each one of our taps, if you've been to a restaurant and, um, or a bar that serves our beer or into our brewery, you'll see that our tap handles, they're called culling irons. And what they are is an actual instrument that is used to cull the oysters. And the top portion of that uh, device, um, if you look at it, it's three inches long. And that is how long a legal wild caught oyster should be. Um, so, you know, the history of Apalachicola, Oyster City, and the great oysters that come out of the bay. Um, we thought that that would be great to incorporate that into our tap wall and into our tap handles everywhere. Uh, that, that's really interesting. I, have you gone oyster fishing yourself? No, I didn't even I have realize not. boats were involved, uh, to be honest. I don't yeah. know much about oysters. Yeah, we're one of the old school ways to do it. There's not a lot of guys left here oystering the old fashioned way now, but they use tongs off the side of a boat really? and um, bring them no up idea. onto the boat and then cull through them for the legal sized ones. So Clayton, what are your future plans there for Oyster City Brewing? Um, well, I said earlier, we're going to work on some new beers, um, Session Parallel, or Session IPA, New England IPA, possibly some Berliner Weiss or uh, Goza, Kettle Souring. And we just constantly want to create good beer and to make our beer better and make it more readily available to everyone. Uh, we've kind of maxed out the facility that we're in right now. We'll brew about 3,500 barrels this year. We can probably tap out at about 3,800 barrels next year. And we're pretty satisfied with that right now, but uh, who knows, you know, things change quickly in the beer industry. So um, we will definitely keep you updated. Excellent. Well, Clayton, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Thank you guys for having me very much. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you at Oktoberfest on the 7th. Sounds good. Well, that about wraps it up for this week's Beer Guys radio show. Coming up next week, we're prepping for the upcoming holiday, Brian of Oktoberfest. We're going to be talking oh, yeah. German beers and Oktoberfest. Please remember to subscribe to Beer Guys Radio on iTunes or your favorite podcasting app and please do leave us a review. It helps us out a lot. Thanks again for tuning in. Have a great week and don't forget to drink local. Cheers. Cheers.